All right guys, so I have officially rewired the entire passenger side of my Miata and What's going on guys, Aaron here, and we are working on putting a new double deck radio in, well not new, it's from my STI, but a double deck radio in my Miata. It's got a single deck, uh, a single DIN deck Alpine in it, and we're gonna be putting a double deck touchscreen Pioneer. Um, I was gonna pull the door panel off to fix the wiring because none of the wires in that door work, or I'm sorry, none of the speakers in that door work, so I was gonna, you know, pull that off and make sure everything was connected, but now that I opened this up, I've got a whole bunch of wires that were just taped off and not connected. And you gotta at least connect the wires that uh, are part of the original harness. I mean, this is probably my issue. All right, and this is what we're left with. So anything that had a color cable coming from the car, I connected to the deck harness. So this is the harness that goes into the back of the radio. This is the one that goes inside the car right there. Now that I've got everything connected, I'm gonna figure out how to get the rest of this little assembly out. I think I just have a pin to push down right here and then this all should come out. Okay guys, got a real quick update for you. The Double DIN radio that I put in did not work. I don't know if either it didn't have enough power, the harness isn't quite right, or three, and I think this is the option that uh, we're looking at here. Uh, the Double DIN radio actually doesn't work anymore. And so unfortunately, I think it's toast. So I went ahead and I went ahead and connected the rest of the wires that were in there. This is a little over a week ago now already, but uh, I went ahead and finished connecting out the rest of the wires that were behind the radio and I plugged everything in. That I thought was gonna fix the speakers on the passenger side not working, but unfortunately that didn't fix it. And so now we're in the process. I completely dug up the door here and let's pop a squat here on my bucket. Uh, went ahead and pulled the entire door open and I checked the amp where the power goes to the amp and then is split to the two speakers, the big door speaker and the tweeter, and the amp isn't receiving power. So I went online and I double checked that the wires going into the amp are the correct color code for uh, the speaker power, and they are. So the only other real thing to do to narrow this down is either A, there's no power coming out of the back of the radio. So that's the first place I got to check. Um, so I got to pull the deck out, check the two color coded wires that are in the back of that and see if they're getting power. If they are, then that means that those wires got cut or shorted out somewhere between the radio and the store. Um, apparently inside of the hinge is a trouble area. So they might have just over time from opening and closing the door gotten pinched off or cut or, or whatever, right? And so are no longer making contact. So we're gonna check that real quick. I'm gonna pull out the radio again after I got it even mounted more sturdy than it was before. Like I got it fully mounted inside the dash cause it used to rattle and shake and now it's sturdy and it's mint. And of course now I gotta take it back out to check. So kind of a pain. But we're gonna do that real quick. I'm gonna slide everything out, check to see if the behind the unit is getting power, is sending power to the door. If it's not, then I'm gonna have to get a new head unit. So I'm hoping, just because it's a lot cheaper to run new wire, that the wires are just cut somewhere and that all I gotta do is run them from the unit through the door and we'll be good. So fingers crossed that it is not the head unit because I really, I don't want to shell out a couple hundred bucks for music when it was only 12 bucks for two wire spools. So hopefully, hopefully it's just wire. So let's find out. <laughs> it's so funny. I literally used 
a couple of snipped off uh, zip ties to stick them in here instead of the Ford radio remover tool. I just stuffed them in there until I felt the little pins release and it's and actually it's actually enough to slide the radio out. That's so freaking funny. Okay guys, so my search <laughs> has gotten weird. So when you look back here, let me let me pull it out. When you look back here, there is this set of aftermarket wires back here that it looks like it runs from left side, the driver's side connects to like they use butt clamps I think that's what those are called and then goes to the right to the passenger side so I was like oh okay let me follow this because everything is color matched except for these which don't have anywhere to go to I was like okay let me just trace this and see where this goes I opened the glove box and Right back there, the two wires, the green and the green yellow, the ones that coincidentally right here are not getting power, are cut and replaced with these aftermarket wires. Something needs to be powering these aftermarket cables because they go into this harness and then from there, go into the door. So something needs to be powering those aftermarket cables. So I was like, okay, let me let me trace those. They come under the glove box. I pulled out all my carpet. That way we could see. Um, they come under the glove box and they run along the floor. In addition to those subwoofer cables, a ground cable, and the left cable, the one that goes to the driver's side, and this right cable, the one that's right there, all run along the floor. And this is where it gets funny. So they run all the way along the floor, subwoofer cables, left, right, and ground, all run along the floor to back here where there is an amp. And I, didn't know that I had an amp because it was stuffed all the way up in here on top of a web root case. So this was right here. And then this amp was sitting on top of it behind all of this under the subwoofer. <laughs> I didn't know those were in there. Just gonna. Yeah, I didn't know this was in here. And this is probably the source of all of my freaking clunking every time I hit a bump is this, you know, two or three pound metal amp just bouncing around inside of my trunk because it's sitting on top of this instead of bolted to anything like it's supposed to be. So we found out where the cables go, right? So I'm not an electrician. I don't do car audio. So this is confusing for sure. Um, we've got our subwoofer power cable, which runs into this freaking mess, and then to here. Assuming, right? Because the sub works, I can confirm that the sub works. The left and right sides are the ones that I am concerned with because this is a really shoddy job. Um, like you don't even screw the amp into something. You just let it fly around in the trunk. I mean, the subwoofer is not mounted to anything and I knew that, but at least it's heavy enough to stay put. The amp, that just slides around and that's all of the electrical. If that comes loose, your whole system stops working. And so maybe that's what went wrong. I don't know, but now I'm left here trying to figure out what the hell happened. And it's a lot harder to track down all of these bullshit wires because they didn't zip tie anything correctly. They didn't like label anything left, right, nothing. So, and all the wires are the same color. So now I have three sets of the same exact wire. This is weird. So yeah, um, every wire inside the car is pulled out. 
<laughs> so yeah, give me a little bit. Let me see if I can figure out what the hell's going on and I will give you guys an update. All right, guys, so I have officially rewired the entire passenger side of my Miata, and this is what I found. So I will show you right now what I've managed to do. You guys remember how we started out this project because the speakers didn't work and we pulled out the radio and we were originally going to add a new radio. We ended up finding out that a whole bunch of wires behind the radio weren't connected at all. Open up the trunk here. Open that for a minute. So, got that out. Realized the double din radio didn't work after we got all the wires connected. So I put the original one back. Door still didn't work. Started completely tearing all the way out to here. I found the wiring running under the floor, so I pulled all of the carpet out, pulled all of this door trim out, followed it all the way behind the seat, and still didn't see a connection issue. So I opened up the convertible top, followed it into the trunk where I found this amp stuffed way up inside of there, and uh, realized, okay, maybe the connection is faulty somewhere up in here where I can't find it, you know, between here and behind the seat. So I literally yanked all of the wiring out from this entire side and rewired it. Everything except for the actual speaker wires. So the ones that go from here, the RCAs, to here. And I knew that those were good because if I crossed the connection, I could hear the speakers on that side buzzing. Bzz, bzz. So I knew those speaker cables, you know, the RCAs were good. So these are the RCAs. This is the ground and power cable that run to the battery right here. So those I knew were also good. The ones that I did completely redo were the actual speaker power wires. These are my new wires that I ran completely from here all the way through here, all the way down through the carpet inside this trim up inside of here and I spliced into that harness, the one that I was questioning the first time and the tweeter works. This one still does not. So I confirmed though that because of that, that means there is power coming from the radio to the amp with these RCAs. And then there is now a signal confirmed being sent from the amp back to the door. I know that now because the tweeter works. So with that, and after all of that crazy amount of work, it now means that I just need a new door speaker. I need a new eight inch round speaker, and that should be it for my issues. That should be it. So that was a lot of work. It wasn't in vain though. I definitely figured out quite a bit. Um, confirmed that my radio is okay. Confirmed that my amp is okay. Confirmed that I don't need a tweeter. Now my issue will be finding a door speaker by itself. I don't need the pair. The other one's okay in the driver's side. It's just this one. So I don't know if I could buy a single speaker. Gonna find out. But we also did this while we were behind the car and I'll show you right now. Since I had literally everything out, I took the sub out. I took the amp and put it right up here on top of the trunk. And I took out all of my carpeting. These two sheets of cardboard are from a range, an electric range um, appliance box. And so the cardboard is quarter inch thick and really dense stuff. So I took half of a box, I chopped it up. I put, you know, I put the original carpet on top and I uh, hot glued it to one of the cardboard panels and I traced it out and I put both layers in here, which now gives me something solid for the subwoofer to sit on. And it's been sitting like this for days and it hasn't moved even an inch. Um, but I could also Velcro it if I really wanted to, but it also gave me, I ran screws through the inside. They're not thick enough to run a nut over, but because of how heavy the amp is, and now that it has two mounting points through both layers of cardboard, it doesn't move around at all. And then I officially ran the cords through the carpeting the way that they're supposed to be up through a hole and got all the excess zip tied. So now I don't have any more really messy looking cables. The battery is completely covered, so I don't risk anything being shorted out because it's touching it. Got a really nice and lightweight trunk set up now. Um, 
the cardboard literally weighs like less than a pound, I think, for both layers. So super lightweight, but dense enough uh, that it holds everything in place. No more subwoofer sitting on top of a spare tire and hoping that it just doesn't flop around. So that has been the experience with changing out, well, I guess with figuring out what's wrong with my electrical, was literally rewiring the car. Kind of sucked, but with all that work, it kind of was a bummer, but I ended up saving myself a lot of money with not having to buy stuff and hope it worked. We ended up getting it right, and now I know I only need one door speaker. While I was in there, I fixed the handle here. This handle didn't activate the door latch, so now you can open the door from the inside and not just the outside. I also reconnected the mirror because that was unplugged. Um, and I got the door card completely secure because all of these clips were broken. So I ended up replacing all of the clips and pins and whatnot. So now the door doesn't flop around. It actually works for the passenger and it sounds way better even just with a tweeter working because now the sound is even, right? But gotta get one round speaker and then we'll be totally set. So this has been my adventure. I hate electrical but I also hate paying other people to do stuff that I know I could do myself with enough time and some, you know, some real energy dedicated to it. So with that guys, we figured it out and that is that. So I appreciate all of the views you guys. I really, really do drop a like, drop a comment. Let me know what you thought of this video. Hopefully it'll help you on your car and I will see you in the next video. Drink water and be safe.